Alright, so today we're going to talk about my experiences filming remote DJ sets, doing one hour sets out in the middle of nowhere, what you need to know ahead of time so that you are ready, you're prepared for the elements, and you get the shots that you want. So as we know, the last year has been all about video, from Zoom to TikTok to now NFTs, and that marriage of video and audio content is something that's just really excited to me personally. So I've dived super deep into this. I've always been a DJ and a music producer, but never really got into the video side of things. So uh, it was really exciting. I got into using webcams first, Logitech webcams. Then I got into eventually Blackmagic cameras for my studio streams and my remote streams. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that process, what it's like to film. My ideal setup is to have two locked off master cameras, uh, one drone, and then one handheld stabilized setup. Uh, if you have black magic cameras, you're gonna need some image stabilization in there. And you really wanna find uh, a setup that works for you, that works with your workflow. I happen to like the menus and the black magic cameras. Some people prefer the Sony's. Uh, that's a little bit more elaborate, more deep menus and hierarchies and scrolling, same with Canon. So you gotta find what you like and then find gear that inspires you and, and works with your workflow. So one big limitation we came up against in doing these shoots was the locked off cameras. Uh, you're stuck with this very specific angle and with the drone, it's much more fluid. Also with a handheld camera, it's much more fluid as well. But you run into the issues of the drone shots not being continuous. You can't fly a drone for more than 20, 30 minutes, especially FPV. So you've got to figure out when to use those shots. Uh, do you want it to be like an establishing shot or do you want it to be flyovers, orbits? You really want to think of it ahead of time and, and how you establish those shots. You really want to make sure it's dynamic as well. So that was the tricky part was do you commit to these framed, locked off shots? Those get kind of boring after a while, just sticking the camera on a tripod. So for me, we kept making changes every remote shoot. It was about trying new angles, trying new techniques, uh, using the DJI uh, Ronin stabilizers with the Black Magics. So that's been a nice combo. And speaking of gear, it was a lot to bring in. You'd have to backpack this stuff in. It would take about an hour to get up to some of these locations. So I brought a Pioneer XTJ RR, super lightweight, probably one of the most lightweight controllers. And I would record the set to USB so it was a silent shoot. That on a keyboard stand, that was the setup. A couple cameras, a drone, a DJ controller, keeping it very simple. Some of the biggest things that you take for granted filming in a controlled environment like a studio like this are power, level surfaces, a clean environment where there isn't dust and dirt, there's no wind. A lot of these things you don't consider until you're out there on the trail, in the shoot, and also lighting in terms of what you can actually see, it's so bright out that you really have to have a monitor hood set up so you can see clearly what's in focus because that's the worst thing. You come back from a shoot and the whole shot is out of focus. So really important to think about these things that are, it's a whole different ball game than shooting in a controlled environment. So think about what you normally take for granted in a studio setup and just be ready for when you're out there on the trail. On these shoots, I brought Goal Zero batteries. Those were amazing. That's the only way I could do these shoots. So basically running extension cables from a battery. Otherwise you'd have to do a gas generator setup. So not gonna bring gas up on a hike. Uh, but the Goal Zero stuff was amazing. Uh, the Black Magic cameras were nice and light. Uh, they definitely get a little heavier as you add in more stuff to your rig. Um, but you bring a lightweight version of your setup. You bring lots of batteries. Uh, and even with the Goal Zero battery, I would actually plug it in, hardwire the power in, and that way I didn't have to worry about having tons of batteries for a one hour shoot. So there are a lot of things you gotta think of ahead of time as well, like make sure your cards are formatted, you've got tons of space, a one hour shoot is a lot of footage and you've gotta have the right size drive. So I definitely like using those Samsung T5s, make sure it's a terabyte or two terabyte uh, so you can get the shots that you want. Just getting the gear up, hiking it up an hour to get to the shooting spot uh, is a big deal. So I bring carabiners and those are great for clipping things in. Having a modular setup is really important because you're gonna run out of space in your backpacks. So bring just the essentials, maybe bring a zoom lens uh, versus primes just so you have some flexibility of where you're set up. Bring a tripod that is really sturdy, but not insanely heavy. So it's tough finding that balance. You're gonna have to add weights one of the shoots, uh, we had problems with the wind shaking the cameras, so that was tricky as well. Uh, but there's a lot to consider. So you learn something in every shoot and you just have to plan ahead of time and make that pack list. 
Another big factor is shooting stealthy. Shooting silently has been a big part of these remote shoots, not attracting unwanted attention. Uh, you don't want a lot of passerbys coming through, stepping into the shot. That was definitely an issue. Um, another good reason to have multiple master cameras because people will come up, uh, hikers will walk into the shot. So that's something to think about. You don't want to spend a ton of time editing that out. It'll take you forever to edit a one hour shoot. So that's a big consideration. Um, and that's a big part of when I scout these locations ahead of time, I try to see, is this a heavily trafficked area? Um, do you need permits? Uh, what challenges are you going to have? So to go there in person is great. I'll pre-visualize it on Google Earth. I'll do a fly through. You can record that. And you can also track the light throughout the day to see where the shadows are going to hit and when is the best light for those shots. Another big challenge to plan for is making sure everything is in sync. If you're using multiple cameras and you're new to video like I am, uh, it's really important to have that clap at the beginning of the shot, obviously to align things and resolve and final cut. They're great at automatically snapping the time to that or uh, working with time code, but I keep it simple, uh, just a clap at the beginning of the shoot. And the trickier part is making sure you have that same clap within the music track. So what you can do is plug a mic in, just clap into that, then turn off the mic when you play your set. Another big recommendation is planning for project workflow uh, and making sure you're managing these enormous files, especially when you're shooting 6K and 4K. Uh, so I will name everything with the year first, the month, the day, and then the project. Uh, and make sure to go through, especially if you're using these drives and where you're working directly with a program like Resolve, you wanna go in and have that workflow uh, clear ahead of time and take advantage of color coding, markers, flags. All these are great tools to keep your session organized because it gets quickly out of hand, uh, much more than working with audio. A big part of doing remote shoots uh, has to do with lighting. As you know, that lighting is everything. And when you're shooting these end of day sets, the light is constantly changing. The exposure will need to be adjusted. So you've got a plan for that. I like to bring in some lights to fill it in a little bit. Um, if you're hiking stuff in, it's very limiting what you can bring. So I bring some little pocket aperture lights. These MCs are great to add a little color to the shot and also to find your way home in the dark. Uh, you know, this is such a bare bones setup. It's such a crazy way to work. But to have some lights to keep things a little consistent and add a little color will really add a lot to your shots. After doing a lot of these shoots, now it's really important for me to visualize the shots that I'm gonna gather. So I'll even write down a shot list ahead of time. Uh, you know, this is standard practice for the video world, but for me, uh, it took a few shoots to understand, okay, how are we gonna communicate with the drone pilot? Um, how are we gonna sequence these shots? Is there gonna be an establishing shot? So in your mind, you want kind of a view of, of the arc of the experience and how are you gonna keep a one hour set compelling, uh, which is challenging. So what I do is I like to front load the stream. Uh, most of these are aired as live streams. Front load it with a lot of interesting cuts and dense edits. And then the middle is a bit more sparse and I'm using those master locked off cameras. And then later on, kind of have a finale if there's this amazing sunset moment. Um, because most people tune in for 20 minutes and they may dip in and out, uh, maybe not watch the whole thing on Twitch. So it's important for me that the beginning grabs the viewer, hooks them, pulls them in. And especially for social media, when you're doing your vertical video exports and you're paring down little highlight clips, those are even more compelling than the whole one hour mix. So I wanna make sure I can encapsulate the energy and the vibe and the feeling of being there in those compelling shots into 15 second clips. That's really important. So that all factors into the shots that are planned and working with the limitations of the gear. Okay, so that's it. Those are my uh, quick tips on how to shoot remotely, doing DJ sets in the wild, using some of the best gear that's out there. Uh, it's a super fun process. It's amazing to see the worlds of audio and video coming together as video becomes even bigger this year. So hopefully you had a chance to learn something new and you'll check out the sets in the future. So thanks for stopping by.